evening and welcome to Tucker Carlson tonight. We want to begin tonight's show with an apology. Apologies aren't something you often hear on cable news on this or any other show, but we're offering one anyway. There's no lawsuit forcing us to do it, no court order making us or skittish advertisers. We're sincere in this. We mean it. It has to do with Joe Biden. Biden, as you know, is planning to run for president again. He's been back in the news this week in all the wrong ways after a series of women accused him of inappropriate physical contact. Biden's first accuser, Lucy Flores, described what it was like to have the former vice president kiss the top of her head. I felt him get closer. He leaned in and was like right behind me on my body. And he leans down, smells my hair, and then plants this big, long kiss on the top of my head. Another accuser, a woman called Amy Lapos, remembered that Biden once gave her an unwelcome Eskimo kiss. He walked up to me and wrapped his hands around my face like that and pulled me in and started rubbing noses with me. It was for like a good 15 seconds, and I remember thinking, is he going to kiss me? And then yesterday, two more women came forward. One of them recounted that Biden had once hugged her, quote, a little too long. Well, this is how presidential campaigns die. So, desperate to end the story, Joe Biden released a statement today promising not to touch strangers anymore. In my career, I've always tried to make a human connection. That's my responsibility, I think. I shake hands, I hug people, I, I grab men and women by the shoulders and say, you can do this. Now it's all about taking selfies together. Uh, you know, social norms have begun to change, they've shifted, and the boundaries of protecting personal space have been reset. And I get it. I get it. I hear what they're saying. I understand it. And I'll be much more mindful. That's my responsibility. My responsibility, and I'll meet it. But I'll always believe governing, quite frankly, life for that matter, is about connecting about connecting with people. That won't change, but I will be more mindful and respectful of people's personal space. And that's a good thing. There's something sad, pathetic really, about watching a 76-year-old man apologize for not understanding selfie culture. You'd hope your own golden years would be a little more dignified than that. But Biden's a politician and he had no choice. They drove him to it, and so did we. And that's the point of tonight's apology. When the story first broke that Biden had been passing out Eskimo kisses and sniffing other people's hair, it was irresistible. You couldn't not laugh at it. We heartily did. We mocked Joe Biden as a compulsive hugger, a cuddler run amok. It was too amusing. But we should have said every bit as loudly, and what we apologize now for not saying, is that hugging is not sexual assault. Eskimo kisses aren't rape. That used to be obvious. It's not obvious anymore. And so we're sorry for helping to blur the distinction between human affection and coercive, immoral behavior. The last thing this country needs is more aggrieved people who think they've been assaulted because a senior citizen hugged them wrong. And so we apologize for adding to that nonsense and anti-human hysteria. None of this, by the way, is a defense of Joe Biden the man or his run for president. We disagree with him on a lot of things. Just a week ago, we told you about his craven and absurd claim that America should get rid of our English legal tradition. Biden says things like that all the time and will keep criticizing him when he does. But hugging people is not a sin. Sorry, it's not, even if many on the left would like to criminalize it. Listen to Nancy Pelosi describe the lessons she has drawn from watching Joe Biden. I don't think it's disqualifying because I don't I think it disqualifying is with what your intention is. I do think this about communication in general beyond this. I'm, I'm a member of the straight arm club. I mean, I'm a straight armor <laughs> and all this. I just pretend you have a cold and I have a cold. <laughs> Let's pretend we all have colds. That's the world Nancy Pelosi demands we live in. But what kind of society is that, a place where everyone has a cold? It's a sick society. It's a cold and antiseptic place, a fearful place, a society where censors watch and judge your every action a place where it's unwise to get too close to other people. In a society like that, exuberance and human warmth are too risky to display in public. It is a joyless PC hell. Nancy Pelosi and so many on the left already live there. You can see it on their faces. They are miserable and afraid. They insist that we join them. We won't go. 
A country where you're afraid to touch other people is a country we don't want to live in.